Hey, I'm Sir, and welcome to readings. Hello, darlings. Uh, what time is it? Am I early? Yes, I am early. I'm 10 minutes early, but hey, you know what? It is what it is, right? I always say that. I always say it is what it is because you know what? It is. It is what it is. Hello, Tiger's Eyes, darling. Hello, love. So nice to have you come in and say hello to me. Hey, Tamara and Phoenix are here. Hello, darlings. Thank you so much for joining me. We're open to everybody tonight. It's a small channel. So um, I went past subscribers, and we're open to everyone tonight. So I'll just get my people in blue, just keep an eye on the chat and make sure that everyone behaves themselves. I'm sure they will. But, okay, let's say hi to Ross. Hi, Ross. Hi, Francis. Hello, Rachel. Hi, darling. Hello, everybody. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ross. Yes, indeed. Hello to Spirit. Cats, don't start. Really? Every time I decide to go live, these cats start. Why? <laughs> Why? Let's say hello to my Jenny Berlin who just came in. And there's my Peggy. Hello, darling. Thanks for saying hi to Spirit. Thank you, darling. Strawberry's got a bad tummy flu at the moment, watching from my bed. Don't you make yourself sick, darling? And, you know, if you feel you got to go and rest, you do that. I'm sorry to hear that you're not feeling well. And it's always freaking something. Strawberry. It's always something, darling. What the hell? Maybe it was that big wolf spider that you found in your bed. Ugh, hunter's, hunter's spider. Yeah, maybe it was that thing. Ugh, maybe it bit you. Yes, feel better soon. Yes, indeed. Pair us up for our strawberry. Hope you feel better soon, darling. Poor strawberry. It's always something. If it's not it's one thing, it's another. Damn. Damn, darling. Okay, so like I said, I'm early. Hi, Diane. Hi, darling. I didn't see you come in. Too busy yapping. I get yapping. I, don't, I miss people. Uh, you're listening while painting mom's house. Well, you know, God bless mom. Well, you know, she's in a better place. Trust me, she's in a better place. She's probably crying for us. Because we're still here. I gotta go. I'll be right back. Okay, I had to break that up. All right, sorry. Or else that would have gotten like way out of control. <laughs> Cats, yeah. All right. Yes, the doggy is outside. I got the door open. It is a beautiful 13 degrees there. That's 13 Celsius. It's beautiful here. Hello, Wendy Maid, darling. Hello, love, welcome. And now he's crying for him because he wants to go in there and beat him up. <laughs> Mighty cats, man. All right, so that's taken care of. Man, oh, man. Why did, why did I get cats? <laughs> I should have just stayed by myself, you know. <laughs> but I got so lonely after my Maximus went. Why did I have to get two? Oh, it'd be fun, they said. Get two, they said. It would be fun. Right, Phoenix? <laughs> okay. Hey, Rachel, darling. Love the felines. Yes, get two. Yes. They said it would be fun. They said. Yes, that's right, Phoenix. 
<laughs> I have three. Oh my God. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Thank you for saying hello to spirit. We're going to start off with uh, Queensland, Australia. August 20th, 2021. Uh, I don't know if you folks from Australia uh, have seen this on TV, but ABC News, uh, ABC Network was airing a story about Queensland's proposal to make killing of police horses and dogs a criminal offense. And suddenly the broadcast was interrupted by a satanic ritual. A man could be seen standing in a black robe and another standing beside him and one sitting at a musical keyboard. An upside down illuminated cross is in one corner of the room and the man in the black robe can be heard, heard saying, Hail Satan. The producers realized their mistake and cut the feed, bringing the anchor woman back on screen. But then it cut again and went back into this satanic ritual and then cut back again. You can watch it on Google. I, I had to check it out, but you can watch it on Google. And some people, uh, especially Australians, some people believe that this was a subliminal thing to make people believe in Satan. So <laughs> there was that that I found. And I thought, what? What was it, Cher, as I was saying? Hi. It, it was a news broadcast. Uh, about what police should do with their horses and their dogs when they're no longer of any use. And instead of killing them, what, what should they do with them? Let them live, give them foster homes, whatever. And, and suddenly it was cut and there was a live stream of a satanic ritual. So, yeah, it was just <laughs> pretty wild stuff. So you can find that on Google. And... Um, just uh, punch in Hail Satan on ABC News, and you'll get it. Very bizarre. Yes, indeed. The highest paid comedian of all time is Kevin Hart. Has anyone ever noticed that Kevin Hart went from here to here very, very quickly? Nobody heard tell of this freaking guy. And all of a sudden, bang, he's huge. So uh, some people believe that he was promoted to success through a secret society. In 2021, Hart had an interview with singer uh, Kelly Clarkson. You can also check this and it'll, you can find this too. I, I researched it. During the interview, Clarkson... Uh, said that she had been offered money to do things that she did not want to do. And her exact words were, I don't know about you. She's talking to Kevin Hart. I don't know about you, if you've had this, but I've had people throw millions of dollars in my face to do something that I didn't want to do. And, and all of a sudden, Kevin Hart was sitting over there going, And, and she didn't catch on at first. She was like, shush, shush. Oh, they're in the room. Oh, they're in the room. <laughs> so I just thought I would share that with you also. Hello, Echo, and hello, Lucinda. God, there are um, uh, things that happen in... Um, show business and in Hollywood I think it goes a lot deeper than a lot of people think I think it's I really don't even want to know what happens in Hollywood I would never want to have to go to Hollywood and be a star that's for damn sure some people cry for it mm -mm, not me Mike Tyson has a did you know that um, 
Mike Tyson has a cannabis brand. Yes, he does. Um, they are ear-shaped gummies called Mike Bites. <laughs> Mike's Bites. <laughs> now, <laughs> for some of you who don't know about Mike Tyson biting Buddy's ear, I forget who it was, but he freaking bit his ear off. So, <laughs> Mike bites. And let's talk about SpongeBob for a minute. You know, in SpongeBob, Gary and Patrick are first cousins. Now, Gary is a snail that is a pet of SpongeBob's, and Patrick is a, a starfish. So, I guess crustaceans, right? <laughs> While held in captivity by the U.S. Marines, <laughs> Saddam Hussein was forced to repeatedly watch South Park bigger, longer, and uncut, where he was Satan's boyfriend. And the Marines made him watch it over and over and over. Now, I don't know if you guys saw that movie, <laughs> but they trashed the scene. <laughs> They really did. And the Marines made him watch it over and over and over and over and over again. Hollyfield's ear. Yes, Hollyfield. Thank you. Uh, Kat, what are you doing? <laughs> yes, it was Hollyfield. Um, Winnie the Pooh's original name was Edward. Edward Pooh. Edward Pooh. That wasn't Winnie Pooh. <laughs> you haven't seen it? You gotta see it. It's filthy. <laughs> Tolga told me. Tolga told you. Mike Tyson's bit. Oh, oh, Holly Fields. Okay. All right. Tolga told me. Yeah, I guess Tolga would know. <laughs> To, commem to commemorate her wedding, uh, Meghan Markle's nephew released a strain of um, cannabis, which he called Markle's Sparkle. Markle's Sparkle. What am I missing here? I have many orbs floating around me. Really, Phoenix? Do I have many orbs floating around me? Cool. I should be doing a reading. Lots of spirits. I don't see any. Do you still see them? I don't see any. I see none at all. The cat just opened up the window, the curtain. Hello. Hello, kitty. Hello. Can you move out of the way? Jager. Jager. Thank you. Okay, where am I? At Costco, for those of you who go to Costco, there is no limit on how many food samples you can eat. So you can go there and have dinner. Yeah, so you just go up to these food samples and say, may I have one? Another one. Another one, please. Another one. Another one, please. <laughs> Where is everybody? We only got 13 in the room. You see, I put a, a few uh, videos out. But this is a different channel, though. <laughs> dinner time, yeah. Another one. Another one, please. Godzilla is, by the way, an official a citizen of Japan. And Yosemite Sam. You guys know Yosemite Sam on Bugs Bunny? Well, Yosemite Sam, bang, 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 bang. His name is Samuel Michelangelo Rosenbaum. That's his name. He didn't get a notification. I wonder why. Because this is a different channel. You should have got a notification. I don't know. 
But hopefully people will find us before we run out of news. <laughs> I love Yosemite Sam, yeah. You know who I love? I love that alien with the brush on his head. <laughs> well, I don't love him, but I like him. Rachel got a notification, and Diane had to had to look. Yo, you didn't know that was his name? Good evening, Erica. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. The Martian one, yes. I like that little Martian dude that skips around. Do, 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 with that broom on his head. Where's Strawberry? Where's Strawberry go? She's not feeling well. There she is. I have a blanket with that Martian on it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Strawberry, did you get your freaking parcel yet? Did you get your package, darling? Strawberry, where is your package? I hope it didn't get lost. Where's your package? Sometimes it takes so damn long. <laughs> yes, that's his name, Marvin the Martian. That's right, Marvin. Marvin the Martian. Did you know Will Smith's first name is? I always thought it was William. It's Willard. Willard is his name. I always thought it was William. William Smith. Nope. Willard. Willard Smith. My God, Strawberry, that's terrible. Where is this package? I sent it like the first of last month. Well, she said maybe six weeks. But we're coming into the sixth week. Riptide just came in the room. I just listened to the Pisces reading you did today. That was an awesome reading. It was an awesome reading, and I'm really surprised. I was reading some of the comments of how many people that that affected. It's crazy. It's crazy. Hmm. Bart Simpson's full name is Bartholomew Jojo Simpson. Really, I'm sorry to hear that, darling. Sorry to hear that 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 video just hit so many, so many subscribers, so many of my friends out there. Because that was just nasty. Barry Manilow did not write the song. I write the songs. I write the songs that uh, that makes the world go round, or whatever the hell the words are. But no, he did not write the songs. And here's something, Mr. Rogers. Hi, Angel, darling. Hello, hello. Come in. <laughs> Thank you, Riptide. <laughs> Mr. Rogers was once an ordained minister. Did anybody know that? That's probably why he was so gentle. You know, I, can you, they wouldn't ordain me as a minister. Can you see me as a minister? <laughs> 24 minutes and 30 seconds is the longest time for holding someone's breath underwater. This man, I didn't get his name, but he held his breath underwater. 24 minutes and 30 seconds. That's insane. I can't hold my breath for, for two minutes. Mr. Rogers was also a decorated veteran. Wow, I didn't know that either. No, not Kenny Rogers, Mr. Rogers. It's a lovely day in the neighborhood, that Mr. Rogers. Come to confessions with Cher. Yes, just come tell me your sins. <laughs> come, my child. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Drink this Kool-Aid <laughs> and you're... Troubles will be over. <laughs> come, darlings, come. <laughs> Stop it. Jeez, see what you guys do? My God. Once upon a time, if you were a freelancer, it meant that you were a mercenary. Did you know that? You, and you fought for whoever paid you. So more or less, you're a paid hitman. 
So if you were a freelancer, you were a paid hitman. <laughs> Once upon a time. Subliminal. <laughs> Don't drink the cool. Kool-Aid, the aliens offer. <laughs> The cartoon uh, Lilo and Lilo and Stitch, the voice of Lilo was also the voice of Samara in the movie The Ring. Now, who was Samara in The Ring? That was one with the hair all hanging down in her face and crawling under the TV set. That was Samara. And yes, I can see the orbs now uh, floating around. So yeah, that was uh, Samara and who was also uh, Lilo. Lots of orbs all hanging around me. Um, Steven Spielberg's first feature film was called Firelight. It was made when he was 17 and it generated a net profit of one dollar. Why are there so many orbs? Who is a silent watcher? Or who is in the room? A spirit wants to talk to you tonight. Where are you? <laughs> spirit is wanting to talk to someone tonight with all the orbs. I've never seen so many. Yeah, there's so many. I'm starting to see them now. I mean, they're just coming right in front of my face. Man, angels, angels. Each cast member on Friends is said to make $20 million a year just from royalties. As you know, they're not making Friends anymore, but just from royalties and clothing wear and replays. And they're each making $20 million a year just from this. So, wow, better go to the decks. 4-4 yeah. four, four, portal open. 4-4 four, four, portal open, but this is not 4-4. Four, four. This is not 4-4. Four, four. This is 4-6. Zachary. Zachary, hi, darling. We have 23 in the room. Hit the thumbs, please, if you don't mind. Really appreciate it. It's a small channel. I appreciate all the help I can get with it. Thank you so much. Did you know that no dinosaur fossils have ever been found in Florida? I really find that hard to really believe. If dinosaur fossils, any place that they could be found, you would think with all the crocs and the gators down there and, and all these things that at one time were dinosaurs, you would think that there would be dinosaur fossils in Florida. Florida. Wouldn't you? I would think that there would. And did you know video game character Mario was originally named Jumpman? The gators ate them. Yeah, maybe. Maybe the gators did eat them. No fossils. Not one has been found in Florida. Why? What the hell is going on there? That just doesn't make sense to me. Has anyone heard about the eclipse on Monday that's going through six towns of Nevia and landing in? Landing in my backyard. Where's it landing in, my darling? Alberta has plenty. Does that? I didn't know Alberta had a lot. And yes, we all know about the eclipse on uh, the 8th, which is Monday. Uh, the kids here are out of school. Uh, I don't think uh, teachers really wanted to take that responsibility of maybe a child looking. Uh, there's a lot of kids to watch, right? Maybe they didn't want to take that um, that chance. And so um, people have been told, keep your kids home. And it's a PA day. Um, teach your kids. I've had people ask me, should I take my child to school? and take them somewhere to see the eclipse. And I said, yes, by all means. That, that way you get to teach your child about the eclipse. I think it's fascinating, especially if it's a full eclipse, but I really don't think it is, is it? Our people don't watch the eclipse, the sun is sick and we pray. Yes, okay, all right, sweet. 
here too, Linda Ann, kids are out. It also says, uh, hi, poor Lauren. It also says um, to keep your blinds down, your curtains closed for your pets. You know, I've never heard of that before. But I guess, you know, their eyes too, right? But what are you going to do with cows? Uh, put the cows in the stable and bar everything up? But uh, I think I'll just keep my curtains closed from pets. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. You know what? I did look at an eclipse one time when I was a little girl. We had a solar eclipse. I was outside and it got like really dark. It was a full, a full eclipse. And I did look up and I saw it. But it was a bit of a cloudy day and I think that's probably what saved me. I had no special glasses on or anything. I just looked up. Hi, Kim. Welcome, Kim. Let's continue on. Donald Duck, did you know Donald Duck has a twin sister named Della? Della Duck. Yes, Rachel. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. The Jurassic Museum of uh, Asturias, which is in Spain, by the way, it's called Muja for short, M-U-J-A, Muja. It has a display of two T-Rex uh, skeletons having sex. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Those Spaniards, men. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Lyman Desson. We use old photo negatives to look at an eclipse as a child. Wow, I wonder if you can use that. Old photo negatives. Well, I've never heard of that, but wow. That's interesting. But where the hell would you get old photo negatives nowadays? Well, some people still have them. They're still hung on to them. At school, we were taught to make pinhole cameras with boxes. Yeah, to safely see the eclipse. There's some weird worries people are having now. Some really crazy stuff. The eclipse is coming. I mean, they're grabbing jugs of milk and toilet paper and everything. It's like, holy jeez, oh my God. X-ray film too. X-ray film. It stops in a town called Rapture. Uh, Nivea is from the Bible, and it travels to six towns called uh, Nivea. Um, I didn't know that. Your neighbor made special glasses for the eclipse. The same materials, the glasses, the negatives. Well, oh, awesome. I didn't know. I didn't know that. I'm surprised that there's not people standing on the corner and selling them, making them and selling them. I have seen nothing in any of the stores where you can buy something. You would think something like that would be pretty freaking hot right now. Yes, it sounds kind of interesting, Dakri. Yes. Won't see much of this in Saskatchewan. Yeah, you won't see much of it here either. I know if you go to um, Niagara Falls, you're going to get a real good look at Niagara Falls. There won't be much here. In the U.S., they sell the glasses. Yeah, there's nothing here. Zachary, I'm a moon child. Yes, you are. You are a moon child. In Danish, the word bay means poop. Shit. Kaka. So people who, when you hear them say, hey, bae, B A E, instead of babe, it's now bae. So my bae said, it means poop in, in Danish language. So <laughs> Amazon, yes. Amazon. 
because they're not sold out. Hi, Mary Little. Welcome. Hello. Several individuals have attempted to sue God. Did you know that? But one woman actually won her case because God failed to show up in court. Come on now. Who's listening to me out there? It's uncertain, though, how she will collect $100,000 in damages from God. <laughs> yeah. Another woman accused Keanu Reeves of using hypnosis to disguise himself and impregnate her, producing four children. She was seeking uh, $3 million a month for spousal support and $150,000 a month for child support. The case was dropped due to lack of evidence. <laughs> Poor King Reeves. Oh my God, he's such a nice person, too. Holy <laughs> crap. <laughs> yes, I'll have a copy, please, Danny, or uh, Mary. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> You know, the sad thing is that there's a woman out there with four kids who actually believes that. That's the sad thing. Man. Not only do I worry for her, but I definitely worry for those four kids. Holy crap. Ah, 100,000 from God, not 1,000. 100,000. Holy crap. Gordon Ramsay wanted to be a soccer player before he went into the kitchen. Now listen, sometimes we ask ourselves, why were our grandparents so messed up? Why was people back then so messed up? You know, like maybe your mom born back then as a little girl or whatever, and her parents were like, Friggin' go, 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 go. Why were they just seem to be so freaking messed up? Well, you know, I think a lot of it might have been that they didn't know what was in a lot of the products that they were using. And this affected them and might have affected their mind. For example, um, up until 1948, 7-Up contained lithium nitrate. It is a mood stabilizer drug used to treat bipolar disorder. And then they said, well, let's take the, the drug out of 7-Up. And do you think that maybe people who were drinking 7-Up with this drug in it and all of a sudden they were cut? Do you think maybe they were suffering from, what do you call it? Seizures or, give me, give me help here. What were they suffering from? Not the blues, but <laughs> lithium is also contained in the crystal lipidolite. Withdraw. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Withdraw. This is why I love the lives, because I can always get someone to help me. Cold turkey. Withdraw. Thank you so much, you guys. Yes. So I think that because of the withdrawing, I think it really messed up a lot of the older generation. And when we were brought up, we weren't brought up like, you go out there and you cut yourself a switch so I can beat you with it. Who the hell does that? <laughs> unfortunately, some of us in today's world still follow through on that, unfortunately. Um, but you got to wonder what kind of damage they went through with their parents and grandparents and stuff. Yeah, and Coke had cocaine in it. Yes, indeed. Yes. Schizophrenic medication. Yeah, it's crazy. They just put my daughter on lithium. It's kind of scary. Why, is she bipolar? I would be really make sure that, really make sure, Jackery, that take her to two or three doctors. Don't just listen to one doctor. Especially when it comes to giving your kids drugs, okay? There's something else that you can do. Okay. 
Yeah, I've had to switch myself a few times. I come back with a little tiny stick. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Diane says have her heart and thyroid checked too. Okay. All right, darling. Daiquiri. Yeah, there's got to be something else besides putting her on lithium. And that's what doctors do. You know, they do. Oh, here, here, take these drugs. Drugs, drugs. Here, take the drugs. It's often ADHD, yeah? Mm hmm. And you're going to wonder, you know, is, is she eating sweets or is she, you know, getting into something that, you know, the grandparents overfeeding them sweets or <clears throat> there could be something there too, which would make the ADHD probably a little bit more diet. Yes, diet can change it. Exactly. Angel says lithium was a godsend for me for a decade. There you go. Yes, there you go. Yes, Mary. Okay. Um, February 14th, excuse me. February 14th, by the way, it's not only Valentine's Day, in case you guys didn't know, but it is also National Condom Day. Okay? National Condom Day. So if your lover just brings you a box of condoms instead of that box of candy, say thank you very much because it's also National Condom Day. In 2018, what the hell is that, Francis? <laughs> hmm. In 2018, North Korea accidentally uh, hit one of their own cities with a missile. <laughs> Okay. Now, did you know? <laughs> now, did you know? Um, in the 1980s, there was a hotline that existed that people could call to hear bedtime stories that were told by Freddy Krueger. I would. <laughs> I wish that was still going. I would love to call that number. <laughs> Have Fred Krueger reading you a bedtime story. I can imagine what that would be all about. <clears throat> Some movies that people have uh, walked out on, uh, either because of too much emotion or because it was just a horrible movie. There's one called uh, Caligula, 1974. Has anybody seen the movie Caligula? It's supposed to be absolutely horrible. It, uh, it, one of the reviews was a sickening, utterly worthless, and shameful trash. <laughs> Another one's a 1999 Fight Club. Now, I know a lot of people watch Fight Club. Yeah, Borat. <laughs> I agree, 1,000% Borat. But Fight Club was supposed to have been another one where a lot of people walked out on it. They said it was just too, it was too um, violent. Now, this one I did see was The Revenant. Have you guys seen The Revenant 2015? Hi, Sophie, darling. The Revenant was... Oh, it was just so goddamn boring. It went on and on and on, and every moment was just trying to survive. And it's just, oh, yeah. I I ended up only watching like maybe three quarters of it, and I just I can't watch any more of this. This is crazy. <clears throat> Did you know the, uh, oh, another one was The Passion of the Christ. I did watch that two or three times. Uh, uh, there was a woman who took a heart attack watching that movie. But The Passion of the Christ was a very, very disturbing movie. And it was very, very biblical. You know, they actually brought that right down to the beating that Christ took. Um, it was it was creepy, but it was more accurate 
than the regular um, crucifixion of Christ. Because did you see how bad they beat him? I mean, he was scarred from head to foot. And that's exactly, they said they couldn't tell if it was a man. So they were very accurate. It says it in the Bible. I couldn't tell if it was a man. That's why he had a beaten. So it was very disturbing, but very uh, much more biblical than any of the rest of them. It was very sad, yes. So if you never got a chance to see the Passions of Christ, I would suggest that you do see it. I suggest that you do. And you get some idea of just what they did to Jesus Christ. The tur turtles' costumes weighed 48 pounds. The actors said they were claustrophobic and had a hard time breathing. They only had this little space, a little slit inside the mouth that they could breathe. And they said it's just so heavy. And I guess it was just horrifying to um, play the turtles. But they made the movie. Um, the Silence of the Lambs. You know Anthony Hopkins? In that movie, for you guys who have watched The Silence of the Lambs, you know his total screen time was 16 minutes. Hello, kitty. His total screen time was 16 minutes. I thought he, he acted a lot longer than that. But no, he was only there for 16 minutes. Yeah. Patrick Swayze. Yeah, I loved Patrick Swayze. Had a very abusive wife. For... I love Anthony Hopkins, too, but I don't think I ever want to meet him in person because he's just so damn creepy. He's just so damn creepy. If I met him in person, it's just, oh, man, you're freaking me out. you got to get away from me. <laughs> yeah, Patrick Swayze was a sweetheart. Monty Python's the Holy Grail, Grail, where they use the coconuts to uh, sound the horses, like clack, 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 like you were riding horses. And the reason that they did that was because they couldn't afford horses to, when they were making the movie. So it was a low-budget film. <laughs> I loved ghosts, too. I loved ghosts. He was a psychic, or here is music he composed, stunning, beautiful. No, I, I didn't. Can you send that to me, darling? Send me a link. I'd like to see that tomorrow. <clears throat> Sam Elliott. Yes. Yes. And and what's-her-name was really good in that, too. <laughs> because she was a fake psychic. And then all of a sudden, she could hear Sam talking. And it freaked her out so damn bad, because she was a she was a fake psychic. <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> she was running around the road screaming. Who's talking to me? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> um, did you know that King Henry VIII had syphilis? Yes. Yes, he did. So we're going from movies now to kings and queens for a moment. Okay. So, yes, King Henry VIII had syphilis. He had a terrible leg ulcers and, and mood swings and a lot of freaking anger. Yes, he did. You knew that, did you, Tamara? Whoopi was wonderful, yes. And the movies to syphilis. <laughs> from movies to syphilis. Yes. And King Richard III had. Uh, scoliosis and scoliosis um, it's where the spine curves to the side and the cause was unknown and started at the age of 10 Queen Mary the first had endometriosis endometriosis and she had phantom pregnancies the disease could, would appear to be uh, pregnancy issues, including swelling of the abdomen. And many times she had 
of phantom pregnancies and come to find out uh, there was no baby. <laughs> the only shares channel. <laughs> yes. And King Charles II had uh, por por porphy porphyria. Porphyria. Okay. And that was a genetic compounds which causes pain, vomiting, uh, burns from the sun, uh, convulsions, and a disease that attacks the nervous system. So I don't know, these kings and queens, you know, but from what I hear, like there's been a lot of inbreeding in kings and queens. And of course, these things are going to happen, right? Henry VIII is also the reason women gave birth on their back with legs in stirrups. Oh, really? I, I didn't know that. Chicken wings are done. So he went from legs and stirrups to chicken wings. Wonderful. And I'm just don't have the appetite now, but I will take a coffee. <laughs> Yes, he did, Peggy. He did. And now Charles. Yes. Do any of our fam here in the chat have a YouTube channel? Yes, Wendy May does. Wendy May has a, rip, a YouTube channel. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk about some children's stories. Now, we know there's some sadistic children's stories out there. And, you know, you guys, I've got to tell you that a lot of them seem to come from Germany. Oh, Brothers Grimm. But a lot of them seem to come from German authors. Like, what the hell? Okay, so I kind of wonder. But there's a book that's called Cautionary Tales for Children. And this was written by... Hilary Behock, B-E-H-O-C. Rebecca, who liked the slam doors and perished mercilessly, is the name of the story. Okay. So Rebecca was a spoiled child who liked the slam doors to frighten her uncle. One day, she slammed the door and a heavy bust hanging above the door, came loose, crashed down on top of her head, and killed her immediately. The story immediately goes to Rebecca's funeral, where the pastor uses it as a warning to not slam doors. Holy crap. <laughs> hmm. No, it's called, um, um, oh, I don't, I, I can't think right now. Uh, Phoenix of Strawberry or someone out there, one of my people in blue. And could you put uh, Wendy May's um, uh, YouTube link up there? Do you, if you know it, please, thank you. But no, there it is. Seridine Tarot Readings, inspired by spirit. Thank you, Linda Ann. Thank you. So Rebecca didn't slam no more doors. Now in 1837, Hans Christian Andersen, another sick bastard, <laughs> talked about the Little Mermaid. Now we all know the Little Mermaid's so sweet. And then got married and everything was good. And her daddy and her became friends and she married her love and and everything was nice. But that was not the real Little Mermaid. That's Disney just nicing it up. The real Little Mermaid, well, before she trades her voice for her legs, she is told that every step you take will be like walking on glass. It will be very, very painful. So she falls in love, but her lover is forced into marrying another by the parents, the king and the queen, uh, or, or said, you got to marry this one and not that one. So her sisters came from the sea 
with their heads bald. Because they had shaved their heads and they traded their hair for a knife. This knife the little mermaid must take and murder her love on his wedding bed. Well, she can't force herself to do it, and so she goes into the sea and disappears into sea foam. And she becomes sea foam. And that is a real Little Mermaid. <laughs> Thanks, Tina. Thank you, darling. So <laughs> it's, um, and, and they wonder why. <laughs> Dang. Well, damn. <laughs> uh, I mean, okay. And there's another one. The, the year is 1812. The Brothers Grimm. Cinderella. But it wasn't called Cinderella. It was, her, her name was Ashen Poodle. Ashen Poodle. Okay, so it begins with Ashen Poodle as a little girl crying on her mother's grave and her tears water a magic tree. So it's not a fairy grandmother or a fairy godmother. It's a magic tree. And she gets all these beautiful clothes and stuff from this magic tree. And these beautiful slippers. Her evil stepmother locked her away so she wouldn't get a chance to try on the slipper. The first evil stepsister cut off her big toe. No, nope, it ain't still ain't gonna fit. The second cut off her heel. No, nope, still ain't gonna fit. So Osh and Poodle escaped the room and the slipper fit. And God love you, darling. Off she went to marry the prince. So as the wedding day approached, the two evil stepsisters went to the wedding being all sweet and, and kind and nice and shit. And, but pigeons came and picked out their eyeballs. Now, that's some nasty-ass karma, darling. I got to tell you that. Sometimes it takes a while for karma to swing around. But damn. <clears throat> Peggy, you 71. Damn. Francis, 66. Rachel, 66. Oh, Wendy Mae's only 58. Just a child. Prim's Fairy Tales. Yes, Strawberry. So that was just a couple there that I thought I would share with you. Hello. Hello, Kiga. You know, look at the tail on this thing. He's got the longest freaking tail, man. <clears throat> How many of you guys have watched The Sopranos? I love The Sopranos. I watch every freaking episode. I love them. He is getting so big. Yeah, he is. He's getting so big. He's just a little kitten. So big now. Yeah, it just might be a bit of a bangle. <laughs> you never did? <laughs> Thank you, Peggy. <laughs> well, what is Sopranos? It was uh, it, it was the uh, Mafia um, series. Too gory for me. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. Well, since nobody really knows... Um, it's a great series. There you go. Tomorrow I saw it. Well, did you know that um, Christopher, Christopher who played uh, the nephew to Tony, you know Christopher was only five years younger? I mean, take a look at Christopher. And then take a look at, at T. I mean, he, he's dead now. He took a heart attack. It's a shame. He took his son on vacation and was in the hotel room and he took a heart attack. His son was with him when he died. It was horrifying. Uh, what was his name? Gen Gen Gioli or something. I can't remember his name. 
Yes, Jackery. I watched it. I loved it. Uh, some of it was a bit gory, but but Christopher was only five years younger than T. And when you see it, you would say, man. Yeah. True Blood. Yes, I watched True Blood. You talk about True Blood? No, that's First Blood. True Blood. James Gandolfin, Gandolfini. Yes, thank you, darling. Tony Soprano. It was his attitude more than his looks that turned me on. You know what? He was just such a... You know, they screwed everything. It was really not something that you want your kids to freaking and watch, that's for sure, especially that Bada Bing place where they all hung out. And those girls were, you know... If you want to work here, you're forced to do whatever we tell you. It was really disgusting, you know? No, I didn't see um, that Senja vampire series. No. No, I think the reason is that just I'm not into vampires. Just something about it just bores me. Vincent Price. Yeah, it was disgusting. So I think that's the only thing that I didn't like, you know. Lots of different creatures. Oh. oh lots of different creatures. I did used to watch uh, Blade. Was it Blade? He used to be a vampire killer. I used to watch him. I thought he was pretty good. I'm kind of a perv lately. Everybody's determined been a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, my darlings, let's carry on. Um, Kanye West, did you know Kanye West used to be a telemarketer before whoever it is who found him? It should have been hung up somewhere. <laughs> Yes, I, I agree, Dakri. I agree a thousand percent. Um, so yeah, Kanye West was a telemarketer. Did you know cows produce less milk if they listen to country music, but more milk if they hear classical music? You still need to be a telemarketer. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, did you know the blue mess in Breaking Bad was cotton candy, rock candy? So, yeah, it was cotton candy, rock candy. That's why it was blue. Yeah, plants. Yeah, plants like classical too, and so do the growing like vineyards and stuff like that. Um, in San Diego, you can be fined if you have your Christmas decorations up past February second. Now, if I look out my window right now, I could probably see people with the Christmas lights still up. I don't mind, but when they still got the reindeers and the Santa Claus is all blown up on the line, <laughs> that's a bit much. But if you want to decorate your house and have it up all night, all year long, that's fine. Just not the big blow up friggin' Santa Clauses. And there's one place, a side street around here where I go once in a while, and I'll, I'll see the Santa Clauses and the reindeers on the line. It's April. <laughs> Some people just really love Christmas. They want Christmas all year round. God love them. Thomas Edison was afraid of the dark, and by the way, so is Stephen King. On his business card, Al Capone claimed that he was a used furniture salesman. The voice behind Tony the Tiger is the same voice in the song, Mr. Grinch. You're a mean one. Mr. Grinch, oh, that's Tony the Tiger. He passed not too long ago. The opening sequence for Sex in the City, where she gets splashed by a city bus. If you take a look, that city bus is packed full of people. But when they scan back, it's empty. So they really made a faux pas there. 
So after she was splashed and she looks at herself and then you see the bus go by and there's no one on it. So there was a big faux pas. Nicholas Cage woke up one night at 2 a.m. to find a naked man wearing his jacket and eating a fudgicle. Cage managed to talk the man into leaving. Well, I decided I was going to check this out. It's true, but not so much. The story is, in 2011, Cage woke up in his Orange County home to find a naked man wearing his leather jacket and eating a fudgicle in front of his bed. So he's just got a leather jacket on, nothing hanging down, nothing down there, just hanging free, eating a fudgicle, standing near his bed. I'm glad he woke up because God only knows what would have happened if he didn't. The man was arrested by police, but Cage did not uh, press charges. So, um, he didn't press charges. But I'll bet you a thousand percent you got a hell of an alarm system putting that bill in that house the next day. <laughs> I'm just glad he woke up because God, oh, why would there be a naked man standing and staring at you and eating a fudge at home wearing your, your leather coat? That's just freaky, man. That's just too much. <laughs> that would really bend my mind, something like that. Now, for those of you who have like a coffee mate, and you like that powdered creamer in your coffee or your tea? Did you know it's flammable? Much like Doritos. But yeah, your coffee creamer, if it doesn't have, if it's not real um, milk substance, it is definitely um, flammable. Senjo, darling. Um, is Pete in the room? I, I know Wolfman was going to come out, but I don't think he he was working on his computer. I used to, Rachel, I used to have coffee mate all the time before I got creamer. Flour is highly explosive. Wow. No, he didn't make it all. Oh. Well, sorry you missed out there, Wolfman. I have a couple more things here for you before we go. I've been out there for a little over an hour. Mariah Carey loves cheeseburgers with extra pickles. Did you know Elon Musk has 10 children? Actually, he fathered 11, but one died of SIDS, which is a sudden infant death syndrome. And we're going to talk about revenge. <laughs> and this is a true story. Um, a construction worker, uh, we'll call him Rick, was sick and tired of a co-worker who was constantly berating him and others and bragging constantly about himself. He was just a real big mouth on the job. And for no reason, this guy even tried to get Rick fired. For no reason. Like he even tried to get him fired. So one day he heard the braggart uh, mention, if I ever win the lottery, I'm telling the boss to shove it, and I'm out of here, man. So Rick bought fake gold coins. Then he went to a flea market, and he looked for the oldest chest that he could find. And he put these fake gold coins into this old chest, and he buried it into a wall in the construction site that they were knocking down. Um, <laughs> all the workers waited and the loud mouth as he was breaking down the wall he found the chest opened it up saw all these gold coins and he thought I'm rich and he ran to the boss and he's got the chest under his arm and he told the boss have a few I'm out of here blah 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 lose my number and the last they saw of Rick was he was getting or the last they saw of the braggart he was getting in his truck and whistling <laughs> <laughs> yeah bet you he wasn't whistling for too long 
Now, before I go, you guys, I just want to show you something. I was on YouTube today, and um, Michael Jordan, uh, somebody had made a feed of Michael Jordan saying one line over and over and over and over and over. Stop it. Get some help. Ten hours. Stop it. Get some help. Stop it. Get some help. For ten hours. There were 23,000 views. Why? <laughs> Why would somebody make a 10-hour video on Michael Jordan saying this? I'm like, surely God, and, and I tried fast-forwarding forwarding it, but because it's 10 hours, it just creeps very slowly. And, and then all of a sudden, I push play. Stop it. Get some help. Stop it. Get some help. Just over and over and over for 10 hours. I don't suggest you watch it. <laughs> Unless you want to, of course. You'd have to really like Michael Jordan to watch him saying the same thing over and over and over. But it's definitely something happening there. Uh, you want to talk about subliminal, so I believe that might be one. <laughs> you got to go crazy for sure. Yes, indeed. Why though? Yeah, why? Why? I don't know why. And also, I just wanted to ask you guys, are there any of you that are into watching the, um, uh, what's it called? Watching people eating? Just gouging. Once in a while, I'll watch this Beard Meets World. I'll watch him. Man, this guy would just eat anything. You can fill the entire table up, and this guy will clean it out, you know, and he'll do it in like half an hour. But there's people that, what's it called? It's not Peg Peg. I forget what it's called, but there's, and there's another one <clears throat> that makes sounds. And what should, mukbang. Yes, thank you, strawberry mukbang. A lot of them have died. Many of them have died. Uh, from doing this mukbang stuff, eating and eating and eating. Can't be good for your heart. And there's another one out there who's doing a series of, it's called ASMR. My granddaughter was telling me about it. I'm like, what the hell is that? She said, people that tapping. Now, can you imagine me making a video? I'm getting 23 or 30,000 views. Okay, now I'm going to tap on it. <laughs> Why? What, what is that? I don't understand. What is it? But it, maybe it works for some people. It, it don't work for me. Like when they do hot dogs. Like when they do hot dogs. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no thanks. Yeah. Is someone smacking when they eat? Yeah. Just, <laughs> I, I got to make a weird bid so I can be rich. I know, Rachel. ASMR makes me nervous. ASMR is just crazy, wild and crazy stuff, man. Some people would find it very relaxing. I don't know. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Yes, Jenny. Yes, indeed. So I thought I'd throw that out there, but... You know, some people find it relaxing, but hey, whatever floats your friggin' boat. <laughs> whatever floats your boat. Okay, my darlings. Okay, darling. Okay, Sancho. Programming. Yeah, Diane, you gotta wonder. Programming? Careful what you're watching. All right. I'm going to thank you guys for coming out and joining me tonight. I hope you enjoyed what Spirit and I found for you. And uh, thank you to my people in blue. Just want to say thank you so much for coming out, keeping an eye on the rum. And we'll see you. Mm, what's this, Sari? We'll see you Tuesday night, I hope. All right, my darlings. Namaste, everyone. Namaste.